This video is sponsored by Revolution Character Creator, the world's number one leading character creator tool that can give you access to creating stylized and realistic 3D models ready for animation at any time. To ask Engine. This is a full rundown of news updates and also major releases that happened within the month of April. Now there was a whole lot of news happening within the beginning all the way through April and that is why I was summing all of these things together in one gigantic new smash. And with that said, let's get right into it. Nvidia has released a new research demonstrating an AI algorithm that is capable of quickly generating a 3D scene from small collections of 2D images. Using a new technique known as the Neural Radiance Field or NEF for short. The NEF needs a few dozen of photographs to be captured of different angles of the subject and then it proceeds to rebuild the scene. This idea is definitely going to change photogrammetry for the future and one of the cool things is by anticipating the hue and light radiance in any direction from any point in 3D space, the AI can simply recreate missing paths. And unlike taking a bunch and bunch of pictures, you only need a few pictures to submit to the AI for it to generate the 3D model that you want. This is one of the things that the folks at NVIDIA are currently pushing and previously we've also seen a huge set of 3D projects and also 2D automated projects that they brought to light. DaVinci Resolve 18 has been released by the folks at Blackmagic Design and this new version ships with some impressive features. Multiple editors, colorists, VFX artists, and audio engineers can now work on the same project on the same timeline from anywhere in the world. Thanks to the major new cloud collaboration update, as DaVinci Resolve 18 now includes a new DaVinci proxy process as well as a compatibility for the Blackmagic Cloud for hosting and sharing projects. But that's not all, and some of the incredible features that now comes with DaVinci Resolve 18 includes the DaVinci Neural Engine Power Resolve FX AI tools as well as some time-saving features for editors. There's also the GPS related paint infusion, the Fairlight Legacy fixed box to Flexbox conversion, and a whole lot of other features and improvements. The public beta of DaVinci Resolve is currently available, and for those who like to test this, you can simply go over to the Blackmagic Design website and download this for yourself. Ziva Dynamics has announced the release of Ziva VFX version 2. This is the first official update since the company was acquired by the folks at Unity 3D and as with previous releases from the folks at Ziva, this now includes a huge set of capabilities for Maya artists and of course with a couple of experimental features. And for performance and stability, there have been a couple of integrators that have been improved and this include the solver tolerance, the support for Maya cache playback feature in Maya 2022, a run-up weight has also been added to the Z solver node and of course a whole lot more. Prior to the purchase from the folks at Unity, we saw a couple of projects from the folks at Ziva. As we did mention that the Ziva RT for characters and also the trainer was in the works and hopefully as time goes on we'll probably be seeing some of these tools available for artists to test out and get their hands on with it. Cozy Blanket is an iPad retopology app that aims to be both accessible and pleasant. Spasil, an indie company which is made up of the former Blender Scope branch developer Pablo Dubaro and Godot Engine developer Joan Fonts, have gone through to make this beautiful app. Cozy Blanket comes with a simple user interface that includes a fully functional mesh editor that can be used to sketch topology right on a high poly mesh. Cozy Blanket focuses on presenting retopology as fun as possible by making it look like a game-like activity that is aimed to feel like solving a puzzle. This gesture-based iOS app allows users to easily retopology 3D models on the go. This tool is especially handy for mobile artists who spend more time working on their iPads rather than on PC. Currently, Cozy Blanket is available for free, but there is a premium version that allows users to import models with way over 4000 polygons, export their topology to other DCC apps, and also have access to more and more features. Regardless of this, if you'd like to test out this tool, you can simply go over to the iOS store and try it for yourself. The Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0 is the most recent version of AMD's open source image upscaling technology. This is commonly utilized in games and is currently supported by AMD's workstation GPU drivers. The upgrade was showcased at GDC 2022 and is expected to be released in the second quarter of this year. Additionally, support for both temporal and special upscaling is also going to be available as this in turn would increase the output visual quality. Now some of the 3D vendors have actually started taking advantage of this as Lumion 12 from the folks at Act3D, a real-time architecture visualization program, has already implemented this. 
Now other software companies are looking forward to implementing this as this will definitely improve how graphics will be rendered on your screen with support for Direct 3D12 or Vulkan. And of course, for those thinking about getting this and playing with it, the source code is open source and is distributed under the MIT license. Magzone recently announced a new update to Magzone 1. Magzone 1, which is Magzone's parent subscription tier, has been updated to add recently acquired software to the plan and new features and improvements to existing software. Some of the updates include the addition of ZBrush to the Magzone 1 plan and the update and new feature addition to Redshift. Redshift CPU now allows users to use the renderer on any system and not solely rely on the GPU. Also announced is Cinema 4D S26. The new release ships with some incredible updates and features, which includes a new clock and rope dynamics, a new procedural and interactive set of modeling tools, and several workflow improvements. Red Giant, Magzone's looks and effects set of tools, presents users with some well-made effects through its set of products, which includes the VFX Suite version 3.0, which now introduces real lens flare for creating realistic lens flare based on simulated optical models and ray trace lights. There is also an update to the trap code particular, which now supports a layer map system, and this enables other After Effects layers to control the properties of particles that have been implemented in trap code particular. Universe 6.0 also adds four new set of tools, which includes Sketchify, Chroma Town, Box Bouquet, and also Stretch. And finally, Forge now offers a selection of polygonal primitives to kickstart your sculpting. In total, Magzone 1 new update continues to bring a round trip ecosystem with an ever growing set of tools and flexibility for Magzone Cinema 4D artists. Epic Games Unreal Engine 5 is here. This is the most anticipated next generation edition of the game engine, which is popularly known for its real time rendering systems. Now, this has been highly improved as the brand new version of Unreal Engine 5 now ships the huge set of game changing features. First off is the Unreal Engine user interface, which has been heavily updated to make provision for the new set of features that has been added to it. In addition to the previous announcement from the folks at Epic Games, the technologies and improvements that comes with Unreal Engine 5 includes the geometry streaming system, which is popularly known as Nanite, the dynamic GI system known as Lumen, and the upgrade for tools for both animators, VFX artists, and also level designer. Amongst this, there's also a couple of new features for animators that gives them some very impressive animation tools. And we're looking at tools like the full body IK solver, the retargeting set of tools, animation wrapping, improved in editor character rigging, and a whole lot more. Along with this is the chaos physics system that has been heavily improved and also the word partitioning system. So if you're into games, animation, architecture, rendering, or probably you're looking for a real time solution, then Unreal Engine from the folks at Epic Games has something for you. The folks at Axis Design has released a sneak peek video showing off the preview of Animal 5, which is slated to be in beta pretty soon. This preview shows Animal 5 in Unreal Engine 5 and it shows a couple of nice things. First off, we get to see the foreground character of High Fidelity Metropolitan for the Digital Humans along with the background characters that is Anima 5's brand new Neural Crowd system. Axis Anima has been one of the leading 4D character creators for artists to use commercially, and with Anima 5 coming to beta pretty soon, we can already tell from the tease that the new Neural Crowd system would be an artist favorite for crowd artists and also architectural visualization artists. So if you're into creating crowds or maybe you're an architect that like to throw in characters and also populate your scene, then with the upcoming version of Anima 5, you're in for a treat. The folks at Adobe has just announced that the Creative Cloud subscription price will be increased sometime in April. This adjustment is the first time we've seen an adjustment in price for the past four years, and this would only affect Creative Cloud for Enterprise, Creative Cloud for Teams, and the monthly all app subscription, leaving a vast majority of Creative Cloud users unaffected, and this is mostly the folks that are purchasing Creative Cloud as individual customers. Now this adjustment will be taking place sometime in April and specifically on the 27th of April, that is when the price jump will start. The pricing for both Teams and all app users would increase in this respective form. For Teams, it's going to be increased by 3.8% and for all app subscribers, this is going to increase by 6.3%. Enterprise subscription will change in different ways depending on the package that you're going for. And for those working with the iPad, Illustrator, Photoshop, Aero, Fresco, and all the extra tools that have been added to the All Apps plan from the previous increase would definitely get this All Apps price increase. 
you have any of the subscription plans that we mentioned, for example, the Teams, Enterprise, or maybe the All Apps plan, then you will be affected by the next cost increase that will be happening sometime within the month. Crytek has released CryEngine 5.7. This is the first major release of CryEngine series since 2019. And this new version of CryEngine comes with a couple of features that is significantly different from what the initial roadmap looks like. And some of the features that comes with CryEngine 5.7 include the Scaleform 4 integration, the Scaleform schematic and game platform plugin, Visual Studio 2022 support, and so many other features. Additionally, there is also support for Visual Studio 2017, 2019, and 2020, as well as a C17 standard implementation that has been added to the engine. Furthermore, the team has also promised to make the source code available to registered developers via a private repository, and according to the company, it is also working on its next major version of the engine, which it will be releasing later in the year. And hopefully, features that we got to see within the roadmap for CryEngine 5.7 will still be in the works as the folks at Crytek has also mentioned that the features that were deleted from CryEngine 5.7 product roadmap between the initial announcement and this present release are still on the list, although there is no specific date when the feature release will be out. 3D Code 2022 was just released a couple of days back and this comes with a huge set of improvement. 3D Code from the folks at Pilgway is a high performance sculpting tool for artists looking for an all-in-one solution. Now the beautiful thing about Pilgrim is for every single update there is lots and lots of new features and enhancement coming to the tools and this release is not left behind. This release does come with a couple of new features which includes brand new voxel brush engine, the alpha collection is now greater and more convenient to create complex surfaces and bar reliefs, there's a core API improvement for those who like to dive deeper into 3D code and take advantage of the native C++ speed. The authority topo improvement is also there. And for sure, there is even way more features that includes the beveling, the curves, and lots more. The folks at Pilgrim has also announced the 3D texture alongside with a couple of material libraries. And for those who are thinking about taking advantage of the texturing tool that exists in 3D code without dealing with the sculpting tool, then the 3D code texture is the best bet. And if you like to take advantage of the all-in-one tool, then 3D Code 2022 might just be the right sculpting, texturing, topology, and also modeling tool that you've been looking for. Inkscape Beta 1.2 is now here. It's almost been a year since we got the last update from Inkscape, and version 1.2 is almost ready to go. Many performance changes have been included alongside with brand new features, and these features include the clip art importer, object and layer dialog has been integrated, there's a new paging tool, the snap setting, on canvas alignment snapping, a new tiling for live painting effect, multiple pages can now be held in Inkscape document which can now be controlled by the new paging tool. Lots of these features are currently available and it's worth mentioning that if you'd like to support Inkscape and help them get better at the tool that they've created totally for free for everyone, then you should go in and download the Inkscape beta and test it out. And of course, there are huge performances and at the same time bug fixes that have been rectified with this new release and it's simply impressive to see what and what you can get from an open source free tool like Inkscape. Reality Scan, a new 3D scanning tool from Epic Games and Capture Reality that is designed to make scanning real world objects and sharing them on Sketchfab a lot easier has been announced. This software was created in conjunction with the folks at Pixel and it seeks to bring reality capture major capabilities and features to smartphone devices through a simplified approach that eliminates technical photogrammetry hurdles and gears that are required to achieve a clean photogrammetry. Now with the beta test phase in progress, only a limited number of 10,000 people who were able to sign up and get the iOS version are the ones that are currently fortunate to test out this tool. Although later in spring, the Android version is planned to be released and this in itself would make photogrammetry a mobile art skill that everyone will be able to wield. 3D Studio Max 2023 is finally here. 3D Studio Max is Autodesk's brand new update to the 3D Studio Max tool, which is one of Autodesk's 3D modeling and rendering software. This tool is largely used in the industry by both architects, 3D modeling artists, game artists, and also animators. The 2023 version now ships with a couple of features that includes the snap walking pivot, which introduces a brand new way of modifying your pivot while working on any 3D model at a given time. There's also the retopology pre-processing for 
handling large amount of data, which is pretty impressive for working on complex 3D models. A new mode has also been introduced to the physical material called the Autodesk Standard Surface Compliant. And there's also an update to the Smart Extrude, which now allows for a partial cut through on an editable poly object. Alongside with this is a couple of other features that includes the GLTF material and export, which now allows users to export GLTF materials from 3D Studio Max to other DCC app. There's also the volume render and display on viewport and so much more. If you're a 3D Studio Max user and you like to take advantage of all of this, this might be a good time to update your version of 3D Studio Max. Along with the release of 3D Studio Max, the folks at Autodesk also released Maya 2023. And this is the recent release of Autodesk's most used 3D app for animation. Now, Maya 2023 comes with a couple of features that includes the Blue Pencil 2D drawing set of tools, which allows artists to draw a couple of references and also notes on the viewport. There's the cache playback improvement, which is very impressive. The topology set of enhancements, just like we saw in 3D Studio Max. There's also a faster manipulation of mesh components. There's a set of rigging improvements for better precision. And we did get a couple of new stuff, which I would sort of consider as updates. And these include the new mesh wire opacity setting in some Bifrost updates, some USD updates, and there is a new update to the Boolean set of tools. Now this reminds me so much of how you could actually work with booleans when you're working with 3D Studio Max and this sort of comes with a bit of non-destructive or should I say semi-non-destructive workflow. So users can switch between making booleans to intersections without working destructively and this could come in handy depending on the kind of model that you're making at a given time. Trimble has recently announced that SketchUp is out of beta and now available for Apple iPad users. To use this, users would need an active subscription or they can simply test this out for 7 days before opting in. The Apple iPad version transfers all of the wonderful capabilities of SketchUp Pro in a refined and easy to use touch oriented form. And this is specifically for artists who would like to work on the go as this supports the Magic Keyboard, the Apple Pencil and compactable mice. Nvidia has announced Omniverse Cloud, a suite of cloud services that promises instant access to the Omniverse platform. This includes the Nucleus Cloud, a new sharing tool that enables artists to access and edit large 3D scenes from anywhere without having to transfer massive data sets. It also includes the Omniverse Create, an app for technical designers, artists and also creators to interactively view 3D worlds in real time. And of course there is also the View app. The View app is an app for a non-technical user to view Omniverse scenes, streaming full simulation and rendering capabilities using the NVIDIA GeForce Now platform, which is being powered by NVIDIA RTX GPUs on the cloud. Foundry has announced the release of Modo 16. Modo 16 provides changes to all of the software's 3D modeling toolsets, and this include direct modeling, procedural modeling, and its real-time Boolean system known as Mesh Fusion. And just like with other releases, Modo 16 ships with a set of improvements and a set of new tools as well. The shader tree has been updated to make it easier to read, and there's a new workflow that has also been included to that effect. There is a set of new modeling tools which include the primitive slice, the bridge mesh up and conventional loops, as well as a wrap effector that allows you to manipulate complex meshes more intuitively and effectively. Mono now supports Rhino 7 files, making it easier for 3D artists to create manufacturing oriented assets. Substance 3D Modeler is now available in open beta. Modeler is Adobe's 3D modeling and sculpting application that works on both desktop and on VR headset. Previously available in private beta, it's now impressive to see that we now have a public beta which now allows even more artists to try this tool before it gets finally released. Substance 3D Modeler offers layers, groups and instances as well as the ability to place items in array, work with symmetry and this would help creating complex models way easier and a bit more organized. It is possible to change the colors of the clay and do a simple paint over by simply using the paint tool and models can be exported as both FBX, OBJ and as USD file format. And this is definitely impressive as it allows you to refine final model in other DCC apps and also offers the opportunity for artists to also export their models into game engines. Substance 3D Modeler is currently available as open public beta and is currently accessible only for Windows 10 and above. And if you'd like to try this on a headset, you might be requiring an Oculus headset and you need to switch into the VR mode for you to take advantage of this. To get into the beta, all you need to do is go over to the link in the description 
and join this and of course you can sign up for the free public beta and also agree to the terms and conditions of the pre-release version of this beautiful tool. And that's about it. If there is any news that we missed, you can simply put that in the comment section. And of course, if you'd like to contribute to this news, you can simply hit me on Discord or hit me on any of the social media handles you can see on your screen and let me know about this thing so that we can share it with the entire community. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.